Hello and welcome to Bradio Software Development. My name is Brad and today we're going to be carrying on with our app end-to-end -end series and we're currently on session 2C and today is going to be a slightly longer session than the other ones because what we're going to be doing is setting up Mongo and we're also going to be setting up Docker uh, and we're also going to uh, install Docker files to our uh, front end and our back end in order to let them build within Docker Compose. So uh, without further ado, let's get straight into the uh, video. So uh, at the end of the last episode, I tried to commit uh, my work to GitHub and I came up with this error. So I can only assume that other people would have got this error as well. And the reason it's doing this is because when we installed our React.js app, um, it actually installed some Git stuff into the repo as default. So if we do an LS, you see, as you can see uh, here, we've got the Git ignore, which is fine. We're allowed to have a Git ignore per subfolder, but what it doesn't show here, um, but I don't know if I can somehow show you this, um, but it appears, it appears we can't see it, but there is actually a folder called dot git in this uh in this new package install for react that we at the top level now as i said before it's fine to have dot git ignore per subfolder but we cannot have a dot git folder in every subfolder so now if we do ls la you can see that there's nothing there and if we do git status um git add git status we can see that we've added everything now to there. So that's all our React dashboard stuff. So if we do a commit and we want to do app add react.js uh, front end and then commit that. So there we go. We've now fixed that problem from the last episode. So sorry about that. Um, sorry if you, um, I did say to go ahead and commit your work as normal, but you may have got that issue. So that's just how you fix it. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is using is installing Docker for uh, Docker and Docker Compose for our project. Now, um, a way that you can run multiple apps at the same time is to open up a separate window for everything that you want to run, and then do npm and then run the individual npm run commands in every window, and then you might have another one for Mongo, and then you might have another one for RabbitMQ, and you might have another one for another microservice, and then they will all load up in your browser, like so. Um, okay, so it appears that our... <laughs> so this is also another problem with running uh, applications either side each other in different windows. So both of our React.js app and our React... Um, and our Nest.js app are both running on the same port, which means that when we run one, the other one gets overwritten, which is not good. So you see here, we've got 3000 and then we've got 3000. So if we refresh that, it'll go to this and um, it'll basically just flip a coin. <laughs> if you don't have a conflict uh, when you run the command, you, it normally, it's normally just the coin flip away from being able to uh, run. So if we actually uh, click this link here, okay, it's opening up our Nest.js app as a priority, but that's, that's a massive problem. And we can fix most of these issues with Docker Hub. So um, what we're going to do is I've actually got another project that I've worked on previously that I will put a link in the description for. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take that baseline uh, Docker Compose file and we're going to put it in the root directory. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now because I need to go onto my other account on GitHub. Okay, so I'm going to put the link to this in the description. I've gone ahead and created a couple of uh, gist files that you need to uh, copy and paste so if we open up the first one and the second one so this docker compose one needs to go inside of your root directory so what i like to do is click on uh, the get raw option and the reason i do that is because sometimes uh, it's quite hard to copy and paste stuff from this and i've seen it on a couple of cases on some of the websites where it'll actually copy across the line number as well so i like to come here and click raw and then copy the raw text file and then I'm also going to click raw on the JDTV Docker file, which we'll come to in a minute. So if you come to Visual Studio Code, on the left-hand side, uh, we have our folder structure. And there's a little icon here with a plus sign on it. And you click it, and then we're going to call this docker-compose.yml. And we're going to paste our uh, docker-compose data into there. 
and we're also going to set up the docker files so this is a docker um script that i've used for ages uh, and it works quite well it also has it also supports hot reloading so if you uh, copy this and we need to create that twice in each of our different micro services so uh, click on the first one which would be api click the little plus icon at the top and we want to call it docker file with a capital d but a lowercase f all one word no spaces no underscores no dashes and then we want to paste uh, the docker command in there now instead of doing that again what we can do is we can just click right click docker file click copy close that open our front end and then right click and paste and then that will create the docker file so if we go back to our terminal type in git status git add git status again to see the staged files and you can see here that those three files have been added now there is uh, something to do with link cache here but we'll come back to this because uh, we probably need to add some more stuff to our git ignore file and actually i've just noticed we haven't actually got a git ignore file in our root file so we'll need to come back and add all those at, at, at another time so for now we're just going to make sure that we commit the docker stuff so add docker fluff make sure we push it as well to our server so that it's all saved so if our laptop does blow up we can always go out and uh, scrounge for a new one and then reload everything from scratch so um okay so now we have everything on our um, repo with docker so i'm hoping that this just works out the box because i've written the code in a way that has the right port numbers um so what is going so if we come ahead and look at it what we can see here is if i minimize these to make it a bit more readable so you can see here that we're using docker compose 3.5 which is the latest as far as i know we've got three services so we've got our front end react.js our back end nest.js and we've also got our mongo which ha we haven't actually done anything to the folder structure but if we have a look inside here we're actually using the base mongo image that we have uh, that mongo has available on docker hub so we don't need to do anything at all with this because we're working on it for local development like docker is purely for local development it's not for um, publication purposes um, you can set docker up in a way that works on uh, production servers but in our instance we only want to use it for local so we don't care about usernames passwords uh, we don't care about mongo configuration all we want is a really basic mongo server which is what we have here What was that noise? Um, so we also are giving it a container name. So we're going to prefix everything with JDTV. The reason for that is when it shows up in Docker, there'll be no conflicts because think about if we have um, another project that also uses Mongo, then and they're all called Mongo, it's going to call it Mongo with underscore and then some other random fluff at the end. We don't want that. We want the actual container name to be unique. Uh, amongst all of our other containers on our machine so that's why we prefixed everything with jdtv we've also set up a volume which is where all our data will get stored to but we'll make sure to add that to the git ignore which we'll come back to and then we have ports so the port uh the way that ports work is you have an array of ports so we can actually have multiple uh ports here so we could have you know all those ports if we wanted to and we could map an internal port to a separate outward port or we can map multiple internal ports to multiple outward ports but in mongo's case we only need one and what we're doing here is we want that to be our exposed port so if we go to localhost 3020 it will come up but internally inside the container it's actually mapping 27017 which is a default mongo port so that's how that works and i can probably go into that a little bit more um, once we once we actually run this also we need to uh, set up our network so that means that all of the containers within our docker compose document can talk to each other in its own um, internal network in its own subnet so and as you can see here at the bottom we have our jdtv network defined there so if we go ahead and close mongo and take a look at the more complicated setup that we have on our front end we can see that we have our container name jdtv uh, and we're going to call it react.js now we actually called our folder react.js dash dashboard so we can actually change this if we want to um the um 
doc compose file that I put up there was literally just the template to get you started. You can do whatever you want here. And it's also common practice to call the service the same as the dashboard, but you don't have to. I just like doing it so it all matches up. Um, there's a few things here like STD in underscore open and TTY that will essentially allow hot reloading on the terminal and it allows you to, um, it allows the, the uh, output to refresh as and when you save files. And then we've got environment, which is where we set all of our environment variables for that Docker compose container. Uh, we have um, chokedar underscore use polling, which means that it will, I think it means that it basically does a, a interval check for file changes. So if you do save a file, it might take a while before it actually rec recognizes that change, but only a few seconds. And then here we can see uh, we have our context, which is React.js dashboard, which is uh, what we already have, which is good. And we also have a link to the Docker file that we want to build. So if we go to API, we can see that we created this Docker file here. So that's where that points to. And then underneath that, we have volumes, which is the same as Mongo. So we need to make sure that we expose our node modules. And this is uh, how this is where it goes to inside of the app. So if we don't put a colon, it means that it will map internally to exactly the same directory. So we're essentially what we're doing is we're exposing node modules to um, the directory that's outside of Docker so that w when we make a change to our node modules by npm install or we make a change to our code base, these two volumes will make sure that it matches inside the container and outside the container. So that's what that's doing. Uh, I might be able to go a little bit more into detail on that once we get started uh, and if we come up with any errors that happen. Um, the port's exactly the same. So we're doing 3000 to 3000. We want to keep the front end on 3000 on our machine. So that's why we've done that. And then our network again. So if we now close that and just do a quick run through on Nest.js. So it's exactly the same. We've got a port 3010, which is actually wrong because our internal port is 3000. So we need to make sure that's 3000. Um, and our MongoDB URL, which is uh, we can actually put in here JDTV dash Mongo because what happens is when you set up a service, it will set the host name in that internalized network as the name of the service. So if we go to JDTV Mongo, it will act internally, it will connect to the internal Mongo server. And we have that as 3020, which also matches our Mongo port down here. Um, and then everything else is exactly the same, except we're exposing. 3010. So on the outside, we can call localhost 3010, and on the inside, it will just be 3000. So this is actually quite nice. It means that any containers that we create can all have the same port as far as they're concerned, but we can map it externally to whatever port we want, uh, which is really nice and it allows us to be a bit more flexible with port numbers. So that's the rundown of the Docker Compose local file. So I think the best thing we can do now is actually come to our terminal and uh, try and run this. So if we do docker dash compose up um, and we don't need to do this command, but I think it's common practice just to put build and what build will do is it will rebuild those Docker files that we've set up. So if you do docker compose up, it will either take it from a cache if it already exists or it will try and build it on the first instance. If we run docker compose up without dash dash build a second time round, it won't rebuild the Docker files. It will just use what's already cached. Okay, so as we can see here, we've got some errors. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, message Docker file cannot be empty. Okay, that's not empty. Is the other one empty? No, okay. <laughs> Aha, so the reason this is erroring is apparently there has been an update uh, with Docker and copy has now actually become add. So if we put in add here, I'll make sure to update the, um, the files and gist and gist as I, uh, find them. If there's any errors. So let's try that. See if this works. There we go. So now it appears to be working. 
Okay, so uh, now we'll we'll just wait for this to uh, finish building, and then we'll come back and see how it goes. Just as a uh, little side note, I did say earlier that the reason we put dash dash build is because uh, we want to make sure that it builds every time we make like npm changes. But I realised that in our Docker Compose, because we're using this volume uh, method here, we're at, we don't actually need to build it every time. We only need to build it if we make a fundamental change to the docker file so if we make any changes to this then we need to rebuild it otherwise we can just keep it as without the dash dash build flag because this uh here ensures that any files that change locally in node modules or in our root folder for api get moved across into the container so we don't need to build it every single time that we run docker compose I also noticed as well that uh, while this was running, I had to run it again because this file wasn't actually saved, even though I changed this line to add instead of copy. So what we need to do is go to preferences on Visual Studio Code, go to settings. So now at the top under search, if we type in save, uh, we can actually turn on the auto save. So it will auto save a file after one second i think so then that ensures that if we do make changes it will just keep on automatically saving the file which is very handy if you uh if you're not a command s type of person who just constantly repeats command s all the time so if we come back to docker compose we can see that everything seems to be in order if you're using the latest version of docker you can actually click on this icon up here and click dashboard um, and there should be a uh, a list of all your containers here. Now this used to be uh, done by something called Kitematic. Kitematic is now deprecated and is not used, and it's now integrated completely into da into the, into Docker. So we don't need to use Kitematic anymore. And if you scroll down here, we can see um, all of our uh, containers, and we can see port thirty ten, port three thousand, and port thirty twenty for Mongo. So that's pretty much it. That seem, uh, that's actually everything that we need to do for today's session. Sorry it was a bit long, but there was a lot to go through. And uh, we did also have a couple of mistakes along the way, which is, again, completely normal. Uh, this is a semi-live session, so I'm not going to uh, do everything from start to finish until I get it right. I'm just going to do it from start to finish. And then if I have to uh, stop things in the middle and fix things on the way, then that's just the... Uh, the way that I'm going to do it because I think it's important to highlight that mistakes do happen. Okay, so that was the end of session 2C. We've now com completely finished session 2. Um, we've managed to install React.js, we've managed to install Nest.js, we've managed to install Mongo, and we managed to tie all of that together with Docker and Docker Compose. I think we made a lot of progress. I'll make sure to put links to all of the things that you need in all of the descriptions, including on this video. And I hope to see you again for session three, where we'll be talking about some more stuff. Um, I can't actually remember what we're going to be discussing in session three. Uh, here we go. So in session three, we're going to be talking about planning and design. And that's essentially uh, planning out the work that we need to do and then planning the design of the app and how we want it to be laid out. So uh, that should be a bit less code heavy and a bit more theory, but hopefully a little bit of mix and matching will make it. Uh, a little bit more enjoyable so that you're not completely overwhelmed with all the coding stuff but that being said feel free to skip that session if it's not for you so uh, thanks for watching remember to like comment and subscribe on all of my videos that i've made so far uh, it really helps me out and it helps people uh, get notified of the videos in there in the in the recommended video playlist so uh, thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time